Indonesia City volunteers hand out mattresses to those affected by the eruption at Mount Sinaban. We see how Taiwan's craniofacial patients lack the educational resources needed to live a normal life. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Indonesia, as the evening temperatures have dropped dramatically to help those affected by the eruption of Mount Sinaban in North Sumatra, city volunteers arrived at three temporary shelters to distribute 435 mattresses to local residents. A child draws a painting of an erupting volcano. The eruption of Mount Sinaban leaves crisis after crisis in its way. Residents are leaving temporary shelters to work odd jobs. At a fruit plantation three kilometers out, here the area doesn't seem to be affected by the volcanic activity. I am here to work for my children's tuition. We would be thankful if the government could help us. If not, then I will just have to use the money I make here for our daily expenses. Himself unaffected by the volcanic activity, the owner of the farm has made it a point to hire disaster survivors. And the daily pay of five US dollars has done much to improve the livelihoods of these survivors. Inside the temporary shelter, space is limited. Although daytime temperatures are well over 30 degrees Celsius, come nighttime, temperatures plunge as much as 10 degrees. With only a thin mattress to sleep on, the cold becomes unbearable for most. It gets very cold here at night. We are staying inside a large tent outdoors, but we only have a mattress to sleep on. Learning of their height, city volunteers visited three temporary shelters to distribute 435 mattresses. We're so thankful for this assistance. With these mattresses, we hope we don't have to put up with the cold anymore. With a proper mattress to sleep on, these survivors can finally get a good night's sleep, as city volunteers help them keep the cold at bay. Staying in Indonesia following the January flooding in Manado of North Sulawesi, city volunteers have continued their relief efforts by carrying out free clinics, aid distributions and cash for work programs. At the conclusion of their second wave of relief efforts, the city mayor of Manado also arrived to express his gratitude to the Buddhist NGO. Seeing their hearts out, flat survivors in Manado of North Sulawesi are expressing their gratitude to Tsuji. I wanted to entertain everyone by playing my guitar because they all worked hard in the Cash for Work program. When I was writing the song, I wanted to cry because my heart ached seeing what Monado has become. As Tiji's second wave of relief efforts are coming to an end here in the disaster area, over 500 residents and the city mayor of Monado gathered to attend a gas stove donation ceremony. We are very grateful to the Tsuji Indonesia chapter for bringing hope to our residents. The once hopeless residents, because of Tsuji's aid, have found the strength to go on. With the relief items given by your foundation, they will be able to get back on their feet. Despite the devastation caused by the flooding, these residents count their blessings knowing that they are capable of rebuilding as long as they are alive. As volunteers pass a bamboo coin bank around, residents do not hesitate to give a little of their love and express their gratitude to Tsuji through a red piece of cloth filled with words of appreciation. 
On February 7th, 17 Dharma Masters from Jai Ci'en Buddhist Foundation in Taiwan paid a visit to Indonesia's Jing Si Hong. The Dharma Masters were amazed at how well Buddhism has spread in the Muslim-based nation thanks to Ci The children don't have to walk far for school living in the Da'ai village. Through a volunteer's thorough explanation, 17 Dharma Masters from Jia Yi Ci'en Buddhist Foundation in Taiwan is amazed at how Indonesian city volunteers are able to spread Buddhism so successfully in the Muslim-based country. The Dharma Masters thought the Indonesia Jin Si Hong was very dignified. During the visit, they praised our volunteers' contribution to Indonesia and witnessed the wisdom of Master Zheng Yan. No area of the Jing Sa Hall is left unused, as each space is a cultivation ground and tells a different story about Ciji. Ciji's origin lies within the bamboo coin bank era. Here they are making bamboo coin banks. Seeing the strength of Buddhism and how it has blossomed in Indonesia moves me greatly. Whether it's caring for a child's education, safety, or inspiring them to have good moral values, the attention to detail is commendable. Through this visit, these Dharma masters further understand Siti's ideals and humanistic spirit and look forward to further collaborations. To give young people an opportunity to find a better career, the Tiji Philippines chapter has, since 2010, run a livelihood training program to help them find a steady job. As the 8th annual program kicked off recently, the 58 participating students all looked forward to the four-month-long training classes. Open your heart and open your mind, absorb and absorb your kabutihan. Here at City's Livelihood Training Program in Manila, Benson Lau, an entrepreneur who has worked with the Buddhist NGO for many years, makes an opening speech to kick off the program. The master's leadership is the right direction and is real, so we should follow her way. I feel like I just wanted to devote myself and give my time. I wanted to volunteer at a non-governmental and charity organization, and the city foundation is exactly that. Since its establishment in 2010, the training program has successfully helped 284 students and women find a stable job. At the beginning of its 8th annual program, volunteers invited the students from the inaugural class to share her thoughts and experiences. I have gained a lot from the Tsiji Foundation, including the right values in life and the right attitude at work. What we learned in the program were all positive ideals, including Tsiji's humanitarian spirit and skills. After I graduated, I shared these concepts with my children. Upon her sister's recommendation, Ariane Bulasa signed up for the four-month-long training program in hopes of obtaining the skills and attitude needed for a good career. I'm getting older and so far I haven't found a stable job yet. I wanted to attend Tiji's training program to see if I could learn a set of skills that will allow me to find a job more easily. Though it is only the first day of class, the 58 students are full of hope that a brighter and better future awaits them and their families. In Taiwan, there are approximately 30,000 coronial facial patients, with 15% of them living on the fringes of society. Without the means to seek medical treatment, children with such condition can only rely on their schools for help. Taking Nantou County, for example, only 5 out of 140 elementary schools offer early childhood special education programs, leaving many children waiting desperately in need of help. This is the scene at a physical education class. Today, children are learning how to roll a blade. These students take longer to learn the sport because all of them are either physically or mentally challenged. 
I always tell my other students that these children are no different compared to them. They just have a few health problems, so they learn a bit slower. To help disabled students embrace the world around them and be accepted by others, in the school, older students are given the responsibility of looking after the younger ones. This is second grader Ruru, who is born with cleft lip and microtia. Although having to wear a hearing aid in school, in the eyes of her classmates, she is no different than them. In our school, we have mixed ability classes, so some of the older students will take the initiative to look after the younger ones. Thanks to early childhood special education program established at the school, Ruru has learned to interact with those around her. Without the money to seek treatment, children like Ruru have to rely on their school for help. Unfortunately, out of the 140 schools in Nanto County, only five offer early childhood special education programs. Currently, our elementary and secondary schools do provide transportation for handicapped students. However, without enough funding, it is hard for us to provide early childhood special education program or early intervention programs for those in need of these resources. As Ruru lives far away from the school, her father has to drop her off at school every day. However, before enrolling in elementary school, Ruru was once unable to enroll in kindergarten. When my daughter was ready to study in kindergarten, I took her to the one that is closest to us. I told them that my daughter has to wear hearing aid and the diapers. They told me that they wouldn't take her. To help Ruru reach her full potential, a social worker told her father that financial aid would be provided so Ruru can receive surgery on her ears. Between the ages of 9 to 11, my daughter will be going through several surgeries for her ears. I know the surgeries will cost a lot of money. For underprivileged families, money is still a major reason why children cannot seek medical help. The family is living on the fringes of society. Not only is the family financially unstable, but Ruru is physically disabled. Approximately 15% of the families across the island are in similar situation as Ruru's family. In spite of the obstacles, Ruru's father is determined to find more resources to help his daughter. He says it is not easy, but with courage, nothing is impossible. Each year, the Lantern Festivals in Taiwan will attract large crowds to its venue around the island. However, with the large crowds also come large amounts of litter. In Taichung, city volunteers promoted environmentalism at the event, while also showing residents how to properly sort their recyclables into the correct categories. And in Hualien, as the three-week-long 2014 Pacific Lantern Festival attracted tourists from far and wide, the festivities also brought a trail of garbage and litter. The giant red-faced Muscovy rubber duck has attracted tourists from far and wide to Hualien. However, the Hualien City 2014 Pacific Lantern Festival, which started on January 24th and will run until February 14th, has also created volumes of garbage. This is the litter created by tourists here to see the rubber duck. Before that, we didn't have this rubbish. The amount of garbage this time around is five to six times more than before. It's quite a headache of a problem for us. Cleaning staff gave up their holidays to maintain the cleanliness of the surroundings. However, from Chinese New Year's Eve to the 5th, 1,156 tons of garbage was accumulated, 137 tons more than last year. This year, during the fourth and fifth day of the Chinese New Year, we cleared out 239.4 tons of garbage, which was 4.6 tons more compared to last year. So we made some changes to the pickup times on Chinese New Year Eve and on the fourth, so we could collect all the rubbish in one go. Truck after truck of garbage is transported out of the event venue. As Hualien does not have its own incineration plant, all the waste has to be transported to Ilan for disposal. While the annual Lantern Festival brings traditional festive joy, the large volumes of litter that accompany it have also created an environmental burden that we are all responsible for.
After 6 o'clock, the Taichung Lantern Festival is bustling with people. With raincoats and gloves, city volunteers station themselves by each garbage area to remind residents to sort their litter into the correct cans. This volunteer who returned from Australia to spend the new year in Taiwan joins volunteers at the event to promote recycling. By rinsing food containers first before throwing them away helps prevent a bad odor from developing. Volunteers also prepared a bucket for members of the public to discard leftover food. These two elementary school brothers brave the cold and wet weather to promote environmental awareness, doing their part for the planet. As the Lantern Festival draws large numbers annually, if we can all take responsibility and minimize our waste, we can make our planet a cleaner place. With the construction of the Jilong Jing Si Ho underway, local recycling volunteers needed a new place to sort recyclables. To help, the principal of the Changle Elementary School, Yang Quinshang, kindly offered the school grounds for volunteers to do recycling work. But first, we joined the teachers and students of the National Overseas Chinese Senior High School, who recently visited the Tsiji Ban Chao grounds to gain a better understanding of environmental protection. Let's take a look. We have heard that Tsiji volunteers are skillful in sorting recyclables, so we are here to visit the Tsiji Banqiao ground, which is close to our school. Over 100 teachers and students of the National Overseas Chinese Experimental Senior High School are here to learn about recycling. Since last year, they have started using their recycling funds to organize field trips to Tsiji's recycling station. We arranged this field trip because we want to make better use of our recycling funds. We hope by taking our students here, they can learn something useful and bring it back to their fellow classmates. I just hope our students, not only the ones in charge of recycling in class, but every one of them can have the opportunity to see how city volunteers practice recycling. This way they can get a better understanding of how to categorize unused items. After three hours of practice, the students say they have not only learned the importance of environmental protection, but acquired valuable tips for processing recyclables as well. If our classmates can do recycling more efficiently, it can greatly lighten our burden. Before, I thought disposable spoons were not recyclable. But now I have learned they are actually a sort of recyclable. The recyclables must be first washed before the other steps. I will tell my classmates how to do that. Today, these youngsters have gained a better understanding of the recycling process and will pass on that knowledge to their peers back at school. Tsiji's recycling truck maneuvers into Jilong's Changle Elementary School. Principal Yang Quinshang is there to direct the truck and help categorize recyclables. Over the last 20 years, Principal Yang has been a part of Tsiji's recycling campaign. Learning that the local Jing Si Hall is under construction, Yang immediately contacted Tsiji with the offer to lend out the school grounds for the use of recycling volunteers. Since the construction work is still ongoing, recycling volunteers have had a difficult time carrying out their daily responsibilities. I have been happy for several days. Thanks to Principal Yang, recycling volunteers now have a location to put their recyclables and categorize them. Every morning, volunteers deliver a mountain of recyclables to the school grounds for processing. I put all the recyclables on the truck and dry them here every morning around 7 a.m. Volunteers hope that through their efforts, the whole community will be inspired to join their cause. Among the community members is Huang Zhixue. I don't feel that we are doing good deeds, but rather correcting our past mistakes. Unable to see clearly and move freely, Luo Guiyu still insists on doing recycling with her husband. Doing recycling is good for my health. I'm already 66 years of age. Some of those in their 40s wondered how I can be so energetic when doing recycling. Volunteers hope that in the future they can organize recycling events for the school students.
After the new semester begins, we will ask the principal if he will allow his students to join us in recycling on a regular basis. Before they leave, volunteers give the school grounds a thorough cleanup, another way to show their care for the environment. Moving to Malaysia, the first ever second-hand shop in Malacca opened last month at City Shisa Recycling Station thanks to the determination of city volunteer Wen Gui Mei, who hopes to remind community members to cherish all resources. The cans dropping mark the grand opening of a second-hand shop at Shisha Recycling Station in Malacca. From clothing to household appliances, the second-hand shop is the first one of its kind in Malacca, and it's thanks to Tsiji volunteer Wen Gui Mei for putting it all together. If we throw these things away, it becomes trash. However, if we use them, doesn't that extend their life? Where everything uh, that is can be used, you know, it's been recycled. Uh. So I believe also uh, whatever monetary uh, gain that is there uh, is also used for charity. Uh. So I mean, it's good for the earth, it's good for humankind. A single thought of giving usable items an extended lease of life has brought a new burst of energy to Xisha Recycling Station. In China, Tianjin City volunteers visited the Jilu Nursing Home to offer their care and love to the senior residents there. They were also joined by young volunteers who arrived to learn how to better express their love to the elderly. Let's take a look. Here at Tianjin's Jilu Nursing Home, youngsters are joining city volunteers to shower residents with care and love. Regardless of your age, as long as you want to do something on behalf of senior residents, you're welcome to do so. The volunteers' presence soon lights up the room. It's simple to make these seniors happy. As long as you show them attention, talk to them, or give them a massage, they will be happy. Thank you, Tsiji brothers and sisters, for giving me this chance to care for the elderly. I have learned that filial piety cannot be delayed. Treating these senior residents like their own family, volunteers have gained immeasurable joy through the event. This is a meaningful event, and I want to participate in similar events in the future. I will write what I did today in my diary. As the event concludes on a perfect note, the young volunteers have found themselves back in the joy of giving. We go back to the Philippines at the end of today's show. The City Philippines chapter held various spring festival events at the local Jingsiho and Marikina recycling station. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.